He's been in uh, six Hilo squadrons, all in a command position. He's been on five ships deployed, including five supercarriers, USS Abraham Lincoln, USS George Washington, and USS Harry S. Truman, where, as the commander of his aviation group, his Hilo group, he had to also command three elements on three different ships. Huge command and control, but he told me that was his favorite assignment. In any event, ladies and gentlemen, this, this wonderful officer has a lot of awards and decorations. He's logged over 3,200 hours of flying time in many different kinds of aircraft. And I am extremely privileged to bring to the mic and phone Captain Jason J. Sherman. Captain Sherman, please. Wow, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the uh, very kind introduction. Uh, I am honored and privileged to be here today representing the United States Navy uh, and all our armed services uh, in general as we celebrate uh, America's heroes. I'd like to start off with a little background if I could. Uh, I've been commanding officer of the Naval Weapons Station Seal Beach uh, for a mere four months. Uh, during that time, I've quickly come to realize the immense strategic importance of your local Navy base. As you know, our sailors and civilians specialize in storing and in some cases maintaining Navy missiles, torpedoes, gun, ammunition, and other munitions. We then load these weapons onto Pacific Fleet warships that are preparing to deploy overseas. Once those vessels come back from deployment, we offload those same ammunition and prepare them for another ship. We do the same thing for the Marine Corps ammunition carried on our amphibious assault vessels, some pierside in Seal Beach, and some via helicopter and vertical replenishment off the coast of Oceanside from our Fallbrook installation. The Naval Weapons Station supplies munitions to a majority of the Pacific Fleet, and in fact, is the only major Naval Weapons Station port within a thousand miles of the fleet concentration in San Diego. In short, we are a critical national asset. The other thing my family and I have quickly come to uh, realize is what an amazing area this is. I mean, just look around you. I've served primarily in aviation related positions on both coasts. I've deployed overseas numerous times, but I'm here to tell you, Southern California, and especially Orange County, is simply one of the most beautiful and best places to live on this planet. We are incredibly blessed to be living here. We're also incredibly blessed to live in a free country with a strong military to help ensure that freedom. Indeed, right now, America's armed forces are the strongest the world has ever known. We're blessed to have so many brave young men and women ready to serve our Army, our Navy, Air Force, Marine, and Coast Guard. And most importantly today, we're blessed to be in each other's presence as we pay tribute to all those that have worn the sacred cloth of service. This day, which began as Armistice Day, started as a celebration of the peace that followed the conflict of World War I. In the following years, it evolved into Veterans Day, a day to honor those who have served and are presently serving in uniform, as well as those who died in service to their country. To paraphrase Thomas Paine, those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must undergo the fatigue of supporting it. Many of you here today have borne that burden and experienced the quote, fatigue of service, even possibly of waging war in order to bring about peace. To you I say thank you. Thank you for setting the example that inspired me and my peers to raise our hands in voluntary service to this great nation. That shared service joins veterans together like no other bond. The camaraderie, the fellowship that we share in military service helps define us and often profoundly changes our character 
and redirects our paths in life. I can honestly say the time I've spent as a member of the United States Navy has been the best and most rewarding of my life. And that service, even after I leave the Navy, will stay with me and define me till the day I die. I've always thought Veterans Day kind of got the short end of the stick, holiday-wise at least. For some Americans, there's no official day off work, and just like there is for the 4th of July with fireworks. And many people view Memorial Day as the official day to pay tribute to service members from the various branches of the armed forces who've given their lives in the service of their nation. And yet this day, Veterans Day, serves a very important purpose. It's the day we recognize not just those who have given their lives in war, but all those who have worn the uniform in service to our country. This day, above all, is an opportunity to celebrate the choice one makes to serve their country and to remember the sacrifices such service requires of both military members and their families. For some, service meant the worldwide conflict of World War II or a lifetime of peacekeeping missions or the tense standoff of the Cold War. Others found themselves in the cold ditches of Korea and the jungles of Vietnam. And of course, we can't forget that today many, many service members means multiple tours in combat zones in places like Afghanistan and Iran, Iraq, be it on active duty or as a reservist or a guard member who sacrificed twice when they leave their civilian jobs in order to serve our country. Roughly half of 1% of our population now serves in the military. Half of 1%. And as we consider the impact those individuals have had on the world, defending freedom and protecting democracy, I'm reminded of the words of Winston Churchill, who said, never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. That service is certainly a blessing for the 99.5% who do not currently serve or have ever served, but it also creates a long-term problem. As our population grows but our military stays the same size or even shrinks, a greater percentage of the public will have no link to the armed services, either through service themselves or that of a loved one. For many, Veterans Day will be one of the few reminders of the sacrifices faced every hour of every day by our servicemen and women. So today, I would ask, I would ask that you take time to honor service members past and present in at least one of several ways. First, volunteer to help a service member or a veteran regardless of whether you're a veteran or not. We have many wounded veterans in the world who need your compassion and your support. Find a way to help them, whether through Veterans Affairs offices or state and local government outreach programs. There are many families and communities all over the country who could use a helping hand. For many of those on deployment, knowing their families are receiving support can bring a reassurance and peace of mind and focus on mission. There are dozens of ways you can show your support to our nation's heroes and their families through volunteer and charitable organizations. Second, make an effort to promote military service for our youth. We need to do a better job of letting our younger generation know that military service is an honorable profession and a valuable career option with unlimited opportunities. unlimited opportunities. This Ohio boy standing in front of you is a perfect example of that. I'll tell you, 23 years ago, I never imagined myself standing here today in front of you. And finally, if you're a vet, share your story with others. Let everyone know what you've done so they can see the many faces and the diversity of military service and appreciate the personal sacrifices of their neighbors. For thousands of years, history 
was told at the campfire or at the tavern or town square through storytellers. They would memorize hours of passages from the epic poems of the ancient Greeks to the bards of Elizabethan English. Heroes were honored because their stories were told and retold and told again. Today we have the internet, the History Channel, and scores of magazines and other publications that recount or report events. But today, most especially today, nothing is as valid, is as impacting or better received than the firsthand knowledge of someone who was there. So I encourage friends and neighbors, and most of all families, to ask for your veteran's story. And I encourage you vets to share it. Remembrance is the essence of the Veterans Day celebration for many vets. Remembering the good times, the jokes, the laughs, perhaps even remembering the screw-ups during training, or the exotic Liberty ports, or the terrifying moments of combat. Remembering our buddies, our shipmates, and our squadron mates, especially remembering those who didn't come back, or didn't come back whole. If you're not a vet, find someone in your life that is a vet and ask them about their service or just simply say thank you. The more we talk about what we do and the impact military service has on our day-to-day -day lives and our day-to-day -day freedoms, the better able we are to hold that up as the example of excellence. We have many, many examples of courage and service and sacrifice to reflect on today. Let's use this opportunity now and on Veterans Day and the years to come to celebrate service to our nation, to demonstrate the appreciation we have for our military, and to inspire future generations to dedicate themselves in the name of the many that came before them. As Thomas Jefferson said, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Today we give thanks to live in a country where citizens from every generation willingly and courageously raise their hands to stand the watch. For all those veterans here today, thank you for your service and your sacrifice. I share the pride you feel in being able to count yourselves as part of the greatest military in the world. And for all of those that didn't have the opportunity to serve, Thanks for choosing to share this special day with us and for showing your support for our heroes, both past and present. May God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you.